you use a little bit of THC and you get everything done, you know, I don't think that we should, um, you know, discriminate that person at all. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grime America Show. Uh, we're going to be chatting with Dr. Mike Hart a little bit later, fellow Canadian doctor down in Southern Ontario, doing God's work. Uh, and we are just sort of in our makeshift setup for a studio. We're not quite done moving in, uh, but we had to get an intro out so we get the show out this week. So we've slapped the studio together enough. There's a big hole in the middle of the table, but we're here, we're recording, and we're going to get an intro done. So without further ado, we got Graham... I don't know Stop what to looking say. For something. I got nothing. Just say something nice. Graham, nice guy, <laughs> See, Dunlop. Even... <laughs> that mic's driving me crazy. And Michael's here. What? That mic, Mike's driving me crazy. Michael or Mike? That mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I'm going to switch you back to yeah, the Yeah, that's fine. Michael's on the Hile right now. Hey, yeah. yeah. Michael. Can you guys hear me on this one? Sound better than Graham. Thanks right. for your help today. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Darren and Michael uh, figured out how to furnish this new studio with a couple of cheap couches or free couches and tables and everything all within like a half day so thanks like, guys like a awesome. couple hundred bucks maybe or yeah something. yeah 150 yeah. bucks to suit, something like suit, that yeah, sweet up yeah. shelving and all kinds of stuff so now we just got to get it all set up and and we still need a 3d printer yeah, so yeah be more than a couple i, I don't a know what? if i can yeah. find one a of those 3d printer a <laughs> and a coat rack yeah. coat rack and we're good to go but we're in this awesome little sort of like uh mezzanine well it's going to be a mezzanine but we're in a little office space right now and it's uh it's pretty cheap, super cheap. And, yeah, we got a uh, green a room great, and a great toilet. Great landlord, great landlord, and uh, yeah. it should be good. Yeah. yeah, a flushing toilet. Yeah, so give us a couple of weeks, and we'll have a new studio, new video going on. It's going to be great. Uh, super excited to get things going in here. Congratulations. Hopefully, yeah, thanks, man. Hopefully the audio comes across well, but yeah, we're super stoked to be in here. We have had, I know a ton of people. I've had like four different people email me, and a couple of people hit me up with the chats for... You know, they want to buy a little wall, a little like studio warming gifts. So Graham and I will get together and we'll like, we'll, we'll populate a little list of maybe like little trinkets we could use around here if people want to get a warming gift so Table we don't cloth. have duplicates. Yeah, like tapestries maybe or something like that. Tapestries? Tapestry, sure. A nice bong. Yeah, maybe someone wants to no, buy a like, nice studio bong. Like, you got to be careful about that. The last one spilt in Brody's room and it stunk like the whole room up so well you like think he was the saying whole... like you shouldn't have bongs at all in here really unless it's like an ornamental bong nah that's crazy it doesn't it look a little harsh for people on video like no it's a bit are we trying to are we that... trying to are we trying to sell a prepackaged product here that's all <laughs> trim and proper and no bongs is that where we're going is that where we're headed well it just might look a little dirty you look a little dirty <laughs> <laughs> so how you been what was that crazy sound right there the, that's the heavy duty that's equipment. That's the heavy next duty door. equipment oh, next boy, door. That's, that's why we might end up moving the igloo in here yet, <laughs> just for an extra buffer space. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But it depends. I mean, it might not be. This is a weird day to be recording. We mostly won't be recording on Saturday afternoon, so hopefully in the evenings it won't be a problem. But we still have the igloo out back, tarped up. If we have to set it up in here, it will fit. Oh, not. Will it really? Yeah. And if I did it again, there, I'd make it so there's no electronics in there, just mics. Mics and laptops. That's it. Yeah. Not not a Faraday cage. Yeah. An inside Faraday cage yeah. that's keeping us safe. What if you built it, but you put you uh, because this room is I don't know. Get it. Eat the mic. What is this room? Nineteen feet or something? Seventeen by ten or so. Eighteen, 18 by, by nine. 10. I and think. And the igloo is ten by ten. No, eight, eight. eight. It's like eight by eight outside or you eight could by nine. Split it like in in half. So you put one half in each side, and then you have just extra space in the middle, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. You might not drown out the heavy equipment, it. though. Like I, I think say, it'll be okay. I, I don't think, think that stuff's okay. going to show up in here, and who cares if a little bit Yeah, I, I agree with fine. that. On Wednesday nights, it's not, you're not going to yeah. have that. No, if it's a problem, it'll be addressed. We're not going to start letting audio quality slide at episode 325. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean that. I just okay. don't think it'll be. So what do you got? Well, I, I don't know. I started that. It's funny. Mike Hart was talking about, we were talking about organic foods and diets and daily routines and healthy, you know, cannabis healing and stuff like that. But I've started a, a new diet, no wheat and sugar. Don't, don't take okay. Neither of each. Well, I mean, it's, it's not like a hundred percent, like, you know, sugars and everything. Right. But I mean, basically no, no sweets, no breads. No, that's a good like, one. 
Yeah, and he was sort of and it, and it, and it, what no it does sugar's is, tough. Yeah, well, so I'm not putting honey in the coffee. We talked about that in this episode quite a bit. Like, I'm just going with a little bit. What are those See, drops? we do honey's okay. What are those drops? No, I know. It's but a I, carb, for me, but... For me, yeah. like, i just trying to get rid of all the, like, the maple syrup, the honey, and, and all, the, all the processed sugar. Interesting. Like, yeah, I the, switched to maple syrup and, and honey and try and stay off of sugar. Are you doing, like, a candida cleanse? Well, I know you've been trying to get me to do that before. You've never and, done that? And no, and, and I mean, oh, maybe man. this is, like, going to sort of... It changes your life. You realize yeah. you you don't seriously you don't know until you've finished one of those. I know. Well, you should probably just tell me. I'll be all probably halfway there anyways. You should probably fill me in on how to get the rest of the way there. Well, I mean, it's tough. It. It's like a lot of it. So we're eating a lot of vegetables. No, yeah, you know, good, no, no good, wheat. Good. Yeah, and it's just uh, and I just got to cut out all that crap. I just got in a real bad rut there for a month. Oh, or two you were in it for a yeah, month or like two. Is that what we're calling it? Well, no, that's all. It's you know. You've been eating potato chips for breakfast for like six months, brother. No, no, no. Yeah. That's, as soon as you, you turned off your chip addiction, I... You just picked it up, eh? Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. I feel pretty good. Good luck, man. Anyway. I stand behind you 100%. It's been like, I don't know, five days so far? I'll join you. Well, it comes with a book. I'm already off bread. Of things you can and can't eat yeah. while you're on the cleanse. Yeah. And if you just followed that booklet yeah. that as your diet, it would right. be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you feel really good. Yeah, it's I'll the Wild it Rose. Go look it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah it's just in yeah. community. There's a, I think that's actually just Buddy's truck. Yeah, why don't you rev it up a little? No, that's heavy-duty equipment. I wonder if people can hear that. That'll be You know what it is? It's that fucking snorkel lift that's in the back bay. So this will get through the gate? Well, everything gets through the gate when you're talking, but I run it through a second gate in post-production. But oh, that's a pretty. he's revving that thing pretty good right now. Yeah. And it's in the bay of our office. Yeah, well. We'll like see I said, how this place goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we always have the, that's why I kept the igloo because the, the, you could set up that thing fucking anywhere and you'll be fine. You set that up in here, you won't hear nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyways, uh, I guess you guys don't want to get into the Patreon debacle. And all, right? No, I don't think this is a good week for that. Okay. I think we'll wait till we're, we're a little more, you know, look well, at, well, we have some stuff from the PO box and yeah. we have a, I have a great synchronicity. Email that you guys might enjoy. Okay, let's as well. run it's through the PO long, box but, first, uh, and then we'll do the synchro. Yeah, because I'm already on the PO box jingle thing. It's okay. always a pain in the ass to pull this jingle up. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna bring your you uh, Christmas pen and gifts. Paper and write this down, or a pencil. Why don't you send some physical mail to the Grimerica show at PO box one six zero three three. Next line. Uh huh. 100-815, comma, 17th Avenue, SW. Next line. Uh-huh. Calgary, Alberta. Next line. Uh-huh. Canada. Next line. Uh-huh. T2T, space, 5H7. That's the P.O. box. Why don't you send Darren some dirty socks? Cause he's got a dirty sock fetish. Uh-huh. Why don't you send Graham some gold bullion? Cause he's got a gold bullion fetish. You know what we need is a nice letter opener. So one letter we get a month. Most of them are packages. Yeah, that's true. So we got this one from West Palm Beach. No return address to Darren Graham. <laughs> P.O. Buck. Sup Home Slice. Oh, you know what this is? These are the fucking encryptions for our passwords. I better not read oh. these. Oh, it's got tinfoil in there. So that it can't be scanned. So that you can look through it with that. So that you can look through it with a flashlight. Yeah. Adam is very thorough. <laughs> so that's all our encryption list for all of our passwords. So now that we have this, he can email us the stuff to keep going and he's okay. locked down all of our passwords. Okay. When he found out I had the same password for everything, he almost fucking had a conniption. So we shouldn't uh, okay, so we should we shouldn't really open that on this segment. Too late. Because, yeah. It's already open. Now we got one from uh, That might just ooh, be a book from Benny Field. Uh, oh, okay. Nikki the dude. He's actually got his uh, his son or his grandson into the show. Oh, wow. Speaking of which, did you hear the thing Bill sent over the other day of his yeah. kids singing the jingle? Yeah. There's a book, A Life Well Lived. Ray Wiley, Willie Wiley, Ray Wiley Hubbard. Thanks for the book, Nikki. A couple stickers in here from the River Roots Music and Arts Festival in Madison, Indiana. Oh, no. geez, there's a couple bookmarks in here, too. Oh, and some cash. <laughs> nice work, Nikki. That's a good way to do what it. What pages were they on? Oh, I, 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 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm too quick. Oh, wow. Look at this one from Skylar Butts in Crystal Canyon. Maybe Don't I shouldn't have said that. Full. Don't bend or fold. Look at this. Look at the art oh, on yeah, the yeah, uh, like it, eh? yeah. thing. You know the government looked at that one. All right. You want to talk while I open this? Talk about what? I don't know. Talk about guessing which pages those bills were on. 33 oh, and 66. Could have been on old. This has got a page turned over on old guitar. He knew you'd go money blind, and so he marked it a second way for you. Oh, <laughs> he knew. <There's> <laughs> what page is Drunken it? Drunken Poet's Dream. This is okay to read on the air. Okay, well, I'm not going to open these yet. Let's get into this. Grimerica. Hey, guys. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of the show. If my life wasn't so busy, I would be bugging you guys more. Every time the taboo topic of flat earth is brought up, I want to interject so bad because there is very good information on the subject that really should be broadcasted to your listeners. Certain inconsistencies in the mainstream narrative need to be painted, pointed out and acknowledged on a grand scale. This stuff needs to be a part of the collective consciousness, and if you guys are willing, I could help with that. It's something I've obsessed over ever since the topic was brought to my attention, so I've done my share of research. That being said, I'm not 100% positive the Earth is any shape, but the pieces that don't make sense is what I would focus on. Anyway, i got to keep this short so I can get back to work. I'll continue to support and stay in touch. Keep fighting the good fight, you sphere mongers. Skylar B. P.S. Enclosed is artwork for the wall. You each get one. Awesome. Great timing. Yep. To open it up in the new studio. And we could do a flat earth show. Fine. Sure. Yeah, I'll do it. We'll do it. There's a, actually, there's a guy on Instagram that wants to do it with us. He's been offering. I tried to get several people. And... It's just like a constant runaround. They want to come on, want to come on. Beautiful. And then they don't actually really, really, eh? choose that's a date or a let's time. Let's get or... weird. Oh, oh this one's awesome. I think this one's for you. This one says D run on the back of it. Yeah, this is probably mine. Wow. What's really that nice. say? I can't read it. It's amazing, though. That's awesome. All right. Thanks. Can man. you read what that says on this? It's all in like tag. It's like a couple of yeah, OI. It's, it's like, and yeah, it's all like tag art. Can you read the. You seem like the kind of guy that could read graffiti. We've got a. Often. We've got to get a filing cabinet going in here to start putting all the uh, letters and stuff in as well. Or yeah. maybe albums. We get photo albums. Sure. And you have that clear stuff on them. That, that, that's a good idea. It's often on the. Something. Fringe. Fringe? Often on yeah, the fringe. Often on the fringe of flat earth. Oh. Awesome. Amazing art. Thank you, Sky. We'll get some pictures of that up on the social media so all you guys can see that since it is the one week we're not ready to go live. We'll, we'll probably be a week or two before we're ready to do live video again. Um, but yes, yeah, thanks, Skylar. Now we'll jump back into some motherfucking synchronicities. I'm a rambling gram with synchronicities all over the web. And Darren is skeptical about everyone and don't believe it yet. This is one of those ones I just can't wait to read on the air. Let's hear it. So it says, hi, Graham. Feel free to read my name on the air. A couple years ago. You guys read my synchronicity very briefly, briefly so he's going to summarize it here. And the, the title of the email is um, Past Synchronicity Extension. I named the file containing the final copy of my PhD using a combination of total number of references and the final three digits of the total word count. So my file was 918888. This was a move away from my convention of naming files you know, year, month, day, doc convention. The very next day on my drive to work, I saw a red Honda Civic Type R with the, with the number plate 918888. I've never seen the car before. The thing that I didn't mention in my original email to you guys was that the plate was personalized. Furthermore, six number personalized plates in Victoria are rare. Generally, you'll see one or two of these kinds of personalized plates every week if you're paying attention. 
Nevertheless, in my original email to you guys a couple years ago, I proved that this red Honda actually exists by including a link to the Vic Roads registration details. If you go to the following website and type in 918888, the red Honda's registration details will come up. I've also included them in the original scre- in the attached screenshots. So now, fast forward to 2018. In January, I enrolled in a master's degree in statistics. I'm not particularly happy about doing another degree, but I have to if I want to keep my job. Anyways, in January 2018, I noticed that my student number is a little weird. 22441444. And he sent an image of that. It's nothing extraordinary, but it's interesting enough because of all the twos and fours. So a few weeks ago, I was in a discussion with one of my country's leading statisticians. I'd only just started working with the guy on a kind of on-the-side project after work, and I was just getting to know him. He is, a hard, he is known as hard-nosed, no-nonsense numbers man. The thing is, I'm busy enough with my real job, study, and our newborn daughter, so I didn't really feel any need to impress him. Actually, I really didn't care if the whole thing fell through. So one afternoon, when I met him after work, I let my guard down and told him the 91888 story. He seemed interested, so I told him the long version by showing him the Vic Rhodes website and the Red Honda's registration details. As I scrolled through the details, I noticed myself the registration serial number 441444, the exact same final six numbers of my current student number. Mind blown. I was stunned, not, not least because my PhD led to my current job, which in turn led to my current study. The truly amazing thing was that the statistics guru wasn't at all impressed. Slightly annoyed, I paused and just said to him, come on, 918888 and 441444? That's two in one million of chances, incredibly, and I'm not shitting you. Two student numbers? Uh, no, one was the one was the way he f- named his file, and oh, then he saw the right. Honda the next day, yeah. and then that registration number was the exact same number as his student number. Jesus. Yeah, totally blown. So he says, uh, and I'm not shitting you, he calmly replied with a wry smile, if you're woke, and I suspect you are, you'll realize that it's futile trying to analyze true synchronicities using methods as archaic as statistics. <laughs> to my utter and total astonishment, it turns out the dude is completely awake and he's not young. We spent the afternoon discussing everything from chemtrails to Oregon energy to Jacques Vallée to shit that I've never even fucking heard of. It was an incredible experience. So this is like one of the leading statisticians in Australia. By the way, the probability, not percentage, of these two independent events intersecting like they did is 0.000000000001. As the statistics guru said to me, it's kind of useless to even try to understand this shit using conventional methods. Darren, I got an 8.6 last time. I could be this wrong. is a tougher one. And I donate more now than I did, so... I mean, it's a crazy coincidence. And he says, warm regards, fellas, Paul Monturo. So what was the thing? Was it, was it the guy he met? Is that what makes it meaningful? No, the meaningful is that it's the whole, it's the leading from. Yeah, it's but what's the meaning? From, it's his, it's so I guess his it's just, path, right? if anything, it would just be, yeah, it would be just letting him know he's heading it's the right direction. It's his record. PhD thesis, right? That gives him his PhD. Yeah. And the way he numbered that. Right, Change his numbering system to number something that way. Then he sees the Honda with the license plate with the exact same number that he just made up for his thing. Then when he goes to, and he get, then it leads to this job, and the job leads to the statistics course. All right, I'll give him an eight point seven. <laughs> Level point one more. Yeah. Oh, Hard nosed. Wasn't the number nine and then, eight one? And then your student number matches the. So when he's showing the guy, when he's showing the guy it, it it matches the fucking. The, the serial number matches I think, his fucking I think, student number. I think this one should set a bar. So it should be not perfect. It's nine. It's not perfect. Nothing's 9. perfect. 9.81. It's fucking it's cool. I already I mean, scored it's, it. It's 8.7. That's it. Wow. I mean, there's been others that have been scored higher than this. So what does it take to get a higher score? I mean, It has, has to, to affect back. me personally, yeah. the judge. <laughs> no, no, that's bad. Some just ring to me to be more yeah. meaningful yeah. than others. No, that's awesome. 
Well, it's still a great, great score. I'm not going to give these fucking synchronicities a statistical analysis for a score. <laughs> I'm just, boom, 8.7. Yeah. You know what's funny, though, is I was thinking 8.7 before he said he got an 8.6 last time. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's why he stuck with it. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I took a statistics course. How'd you do? It, it's, I sucked. I bet. You know, How you know was why? the teacher? Do you know why? You know why? How was the teacher? He was a fucking disaster. Yeah, you have to have a good staff That's teacher. What, so get this. First day of physics cor- uh, statistics course, 9-11. Really? Yeah. The first what day of class? I was like, fuck that. I'm not going to course. I was like, just, what's going to happen here? I'm like, this. I was supposed to go to statistics course, and it, they, I thought it was going to be canceled and all that, and I was like, forget this. Oh, today you would have gotten an A right there. I missed, been like schools closed. I missed. You can all go do whatever. You everybody gets an A. And I missed that fundamental first class, and it fucked me through the whole class. You like never I caught up. Never caught up. I never, never caught up. Caught up after that. I tried to get the teacher to help me, like, and you know, because I, it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That's a shame. Disaster. Shame. Goddamn yeah. shame. And that's how I always remember nine eleven because I was like, oh, I don't want to go to that. Well, something first like ninety percent of statistics are made up anyway. So what? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He just made that up. <laughs> All right, let's get a fucking UFO quote in here. All right, buddy. Down in Graham, going deep. It's a profound UFO quote of a week. Words to ponder and critique. It's a profound UFO quote of a week. All right, it must be accepted that some type of flying objects have been observed, although their identification and origin are not discernible. And that was from the U.S. Air Intelligent Report 100-203-79, Analysis of Flying Objects in the U.S. from December 10, 1948. Nice, good year. It's a good year. Well, I suppose since Michael's got to get out of here, you got to get here. We'll get we'll bag for some money and get the fuck out for this week. Sorry for the short intro, but like we say, we are in a half finished studio. We got a pile of cords on the floor. I'm hearing a buzz now that's driving me crazy. I don't know if it's yeah, my headphones what, or what if it's on the mic. On that, well, it's like yeah. both of those mics. This one, you don't hear it as much that's at right, all, right? That's like right, you don't yeah. hear it. You can't hear it, right? So that makes me think that it's in the gate someplace. Oh, it's all the. Massive five foot by five foot clump of wires. It could be the there. massive pile of wires behind the thing. Yeah. It honestly could because I mean to clean that up and I just ran out of time. So we'll have it sorted out over the next couple of weeks. Bear with us as we move into this new space, which we are getting a great deal on, like Graham said, but it is still expensive. So uh, a great deal in Calgary is still expensive as fuck. So we do need support. We have a new monthly bill. We've got, we had to get the two internet lines out here temporarily to keep up and up bandwidth. Uh, we just had to pull some money out of the budget to furnish this motherfucker. So, grandamerica.ca slash support or grandamerica.ca slash stripe for the stripe people. If you can hit up one of those today for some sort of a monthly or anything helps, guys, we really do need your support. Um, the value that keeps the show going. Without that, we fall flat. Yeah, it's so. incredible. We can't. We can do this now with all you know with the support that we have. It's. It's. And we thank everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So head over today if you're not a supporter. Uh, 2019 really is the year where you should. You know, make that decision to decide to support the show so that we can keep going and uh, keep paying these bills and keep the show growing, hopefully. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, also, we should mention CAC 2019. Um, tickets are going for that. So head over to hdtravel.me. Is it me? Yep. hdtravel.me. And check that out today. Uh, next week, we're going to go down and dirty into that and get into that a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, get some tickets for that because we are going to go on some other shows and start talking about that soon. So we'd really like to keep it here. Randall's going to start mentioning it to his community a little bit more. So if Grimericans want to get in and make it an all American event, then you guys need to, to step up, get some tickets. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to start uh, swimming in some other pools to fill this thing up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can just save a spot with a small deposit or something. Like yeah, that, that's right. right. You can, you can yeah. email... Um, Alan at uh, CAC2019 at hdtravel.me. There's a link in the show notes. There's a flyer in the show notes. If you want to email Graham or I and get some feedback first, you can welcome to do that as well. Other than that, guys, uh, thanks for bearing with us for the move and everything else and a couple late episodes and all that shit. Uh, we appreciate it, and we should be back to normal by, well, give us two or three weeks and we'll be settled in. Yeah. 
All right, guys, enjoy the chat with Dr. Mike Hart. We got a special one tonight from back east in Ontario, Canada. We've got Dr. Michael Hart. Uh, he's got his own. He's, he was the first one in London, Ontario, to, to create a cannabis clinic. So he's definitely into that and sports and nutrition, health and wellness. I'm not going to get too deep into his bio, but he's uh, he's got lots of education and an open mind, and he's into helping people out with cannabis amongst a bunch of other things. So welcome to the show, Michael. Well, thanks so much for uh, having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. And I uh, hope uh, I can live up to the introduction. <laughs> oh, yeah, no problem. If I slip and call you Mike, is that okay? That's cool. I automatically cool. go to, to Mike. I've had yeah, yeah. some people that, you know, like they go by Michael and I keep calling him Mike anyway. So let's, let's get that out of the way right away. So, yeah, where yeah, do you want to start, Darren? I mean, this is, uh, this is, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. I was. Well, yeah, I mean, I've had a cannabis prescription. Prescription? That's right. I think I said that right. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, I've been a, a recreational smoker of cannabis <laughs> most of my life, most of my adult life anyway. Um, so I mostly got the prescription just to, just as like a, a um, I guess as a security, sort of a security feature. But, um, you know, I do, I use cannabis as, you know, as much as I do for a reason, because I feel like it just, in a world that's completely fucked, cannabis helps cope. You know, I don't think human beings are really meant to deal with the shit we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's why a lot of people are maybe closer to the plant than they needed to be in, in, you know, a long, a long time ago. What, what, what would, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I kind of agree with you in, in many aspects. Um, I think that, you know, we are in a really strange society right now. Like we, we haven't, you know, evolved yet to live in the society we have with, you know, all these people, all this stimulation, you know, it's overstimulation all the time. You, you know, it's whether it's cell phone, your TV, um, you know, or all the people like people live in cities of like 6 million, you know, even, even 10 million plus, um, you know, and really like we're only supposed to be around, you know, 20, 30 people, maybe like 200 max. Like that's what, you know, we kind of like evolved to really be around and to be comfortable around. So we, <clears throat> we are in this crazy environment. Um, everyone knows that there's, you know, a massive, um, you know, kind of mental health crisis or just kind of general stress. Uh, kind of crisis going on and i think that a lot of people are um you know medicating with cannabis and you know i would argue that a lot of people that say they're doing it recreationally uh are actually in fact doing it um medically you know they are doing it to relieve stress or to relieve anxiety um <clears throat> but it's just not something that you know they may not want to say out loud or kind of be labeled in that type of way so I think that a lot of people that are using it um, or say that they use it recreation are actually using it medically in many ways. That's a good point. So then they shouldn't be able to tax it. And the other half are using it chronically and they don't want to admit it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we saw, I don't know. See, I look at you all raged out half the time. <laughs> purple. Your face is purple. You're upset. I don't get there. You should see me last night at hockey. Oh, I yeah, bet. I, I bet you're still you're still pissed off when I seen you this morning. 
we won't get into that. So, so how'd you fall into this sort of line of work? How'd you, uh, I mean, uh, I guess you're the right about that right age, but uh, how'd you, how did you come to be a, a, a pro cannabis doctor? Because yeah, they are still, I mean, I think there's what, you know, it still seems like there's only, there's only one or two in Calgary. So it's still, um, you know, we're not quite there yet. They're not only pro cannabis, but you're also into nutrition and, and health and wellness in a way that really we got to admit that not a lot of traditional doctors are, are that interested in it seems anyways. I mean, you seem to be, does insurance still cover it when you just like want to help people with, <laughs> with nutrition and stuff or, uh, I mean, some people will come in and ask me, you know, general nutrition questions, but, um, for the most part, no, that's not what I do. Uh, in my in my clinic, it's mostly you know cannabis and cannabis counseling. You guys fired off like three or four. Yeah, good. sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know when you want me to answer. Start with so. start with how you got into the cannabis part of it, and then we can expand into the other stuff. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, I started seeing patients on my own independently in uh, 2013. That's when I started um, my family medicine practice, um, and you know a lot of the patients were in pain or they had a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, they couldn't sleep at night and they just weren't getting, you know, really good relief with a lot of the traditional pharmaceuticals that, you know, I was prescribed in the first few months I was uh, out of school. And, you know, I knew in my heart that, you know, cannabis could definitely um, help these people. So I just kind of sought out a way where I could uh, start prescribing uh, cannabis. Um, so I teamed up with someone um, and then started uh, my own cannabis clinic. Um, and then, you know, right away I saw results uh, with patients and I knew that this was something that I wanted to continue. And, you know, ever since then, you know, people just, uh, you know, keep getting results. And on top of that, you know, I keep learning more about cannabis. Uh, there keeps um, getting more and more uh, cannabis products are being released, uh, you know, better cannabis products. Um, you know, when I first started, I could really just prescribe uh, dried cannabis. You know, then there was oils. Now we got sprays. Uh, there's capsules. You know, um, you know, I think there's at least one licensed producer that has, you know, a, a cream formulation. So, you know, there's there's different uh, methods of using it now. There's different, uh, which, you know, a lot of patients like because a lot of people, you know, don't want to use the dried bud. They do want to use the oils or, um, you know, like a, a pill or something else. So, you know, it's come uh, a long way. And I think that, you know, the more research we have, uh, the better products we're going to get and the better results patients are going to get. So, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited about, you know, the, the whole future of the cannabis industry. What, were, so what are some of the main things that you're helping people with? Like if you'd said the top two or three things that they're, you know, really getting benefits from? I would say it's really hard to say. I would say number one might have to be sleep. So, like a lot of people really have trouble sleeping and you know a lot of the sleeping pills that are prescribed on the market do uh, you know come with a lot of side effects um, like a lot of people complain about zopiclone in particular you know that's a big one that's that's prescribed uh, in Canada um, and a lot of people find that when they use cannabis uh, you know, they can use a vape to help them fall asleep. If, if someone has, you know, trouble just falling asleep, not really staying asleep. And, you know, if someone has, you know, trouble um, staying asleep, they can use the oil, you know, because that's uh, longer lasting. And if you have troubles with both, and you can use the vape and you can use the oil. So, you know, it really, too, kind of makes the medicine a little bit um, even more tailored to the individual because you can kind of pick that, you know, um, delivery method. So, um, it's really effective for, for sleep, for falling asleep and staying asleep. And like you mentioned in, in one of your blogs, sleep is one of the most important things, probably one of the underrated, most underrated things that lead to other uh, other problems. Oh, yeah. Like like a lot of the patients with mental health disorders, like once you fix their sleep, you fix like almost half their issues, you know. So um, like someone, I mean, everyone knows that when you get – you know, seven or eight hours sleep, especially if, if it's straight solid sleep, like you're going to feel so much better the next day and say if you got, you know, like four or five hours of broken sleep or less than that, you know. Um, and, you know, over time you do it like chronically, you know, people get sleep deprived and like they don't even um, like realize like how awful they feel, you know. And then like people will try cannabis. I've had many patients tell me like, you know, this is the first 
time I've ever gotten more than like six or seven hours of sleep straight in like 10 years. Like people will say that all the time. And then because they get that sleep, um, they just feel so much better the next day. So they have, you know, the best well being they've also ever had in 10 years as a consequence of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. We got uh, the chats that move fast, and due to the nature of the show, we're getting some medical questions. So whenever they pop up, I think I'll bring them up as they come. Sure, um, cool. So we got friend of the show, Nikki the Dude. He's been around since almost day one. And he says, what medicine does Dr. Hart recommend for stroke recovery and seizures? Okay, so stroke recovery is something that, you know, I'm definitely not um, an expert in and something that I don't. Uh, prescribe it for or have prescribed it for so I'm not saying that it may not be effective in that situation but um, you know it's not something that I have experience with so you know I'm going to defer that one um, but first first seizure disorders you know high CBD uh, high CBD oil um, is what's been shown to be uh, really effective and I know that you know people always talk about the kids you know pediatric epilepsy um, but you know, it can also help adults in seizures as well. Um, I think that it just was kind of focused on kids there for a while because of that um, Sanjay Gupta documentary. So whenever yeah. someone asks this question, you know, I always say to people, you know, like don't forget the adults too. It, it's it's not just pediatric um, epilepsy. I think it's epilepsy uh, in general that I've seen anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, high C deal. I mean, I have patients in, in my clinic. Uh, who didn't have their driver's license and then with CBD oil um, their seizures were then controlled and then they were able to get their driver's license so yeah it's definitely an incredible medicine for for, uh, for treating uh, seizure disorders but sorry I couldn't answer the other question no that's okay so what about other uh, studies and health benefits of CBD and and or THC as far as some of the newer things that people might not know about as far as maybe cancer related stuff or other pretty serious uh serious you know um remedies okay um well i think you know one big one that a lot of people uh, are talking about these days is alzheimer's um because uh you know we know that we have this like aging population and a lot of people are you know we're going to have a rise in alzheimer's numbers in for, for years to come and unfortunately with that like it costs the, the healthcare system a lot of money um, as well and you know it's a terrible disease to have like you know you, you you wouldn't wish it upon anybody you know losing um, your mind basically right slowly over time so <clears throat> I think that um, you know using a little bit of CBD and THC you know, daily can definitely decrease your risk potentially of getting Alzheimer's disease because THC has been shown to um, decrease the formation of beta amyloid plaques, which is basically the hallmark of, of, of Alzheimer's disease. So, you know, I think that's, um, you know, a big one that may also, you know, surprise people, I guess, a little bit as well, just because, uh, you know, you always think that would make we're always told that it would uh, will make your memory worse, and I'm certainly not saying that if you you know smoke a high THC joint, your short term memory you know likely will be impaired, particularly if you're not a chronic user. You know, now if you're a chronic user, some of those people are going to argue that you know my short term memory is um, just always bad. <laughs> you know, doesn't get in there, but I think that there's, I think that there's enough literature there to that exists. Like it's definitely pairs with some short term memory. What about um, long term? Long term, see. Um, long term, not not so much. Um, you know, most of the studies show that if you are a chronic cannabis user, even after like a month of of abstinence, um, the memory death, the short term memory, uh, basically returns. So, you know, there really isn't too much um, evidence on, on uh, people, you know, losing their memory uh, long term with cannabis use. Nice. Yeah. Any other studies come to mind at all for, for other things? Like, you know, is there, I mean, there must be a lot of uh, as far as chronic pain goes and some of the, uh, yeah. so, the anyway. anti-inflammation kind of thing. Yeah, so, um, you know, those are both really good points. And, you know, chronic pain was kind of hard for me to, to decide which one first, you know, insomnia, uh, chronic pain. And then you could also say sort of just like mental health 
for PTSD in general, like those, those top three are, are, you know, um, are all really, um, you know, treatable with, 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 with cannabis use, but, um, chronic pain. Yeah. So, you know, in the daytime, you know, I don't want my patients to be high. So, you know, I always, you know, try and tell them just to use the CBD oil because the CBD oil can be really effective for pain as well. Because as you mentioned, it is an anti-inflammatory, um, which is a good point because, um, and something that we should talk about just a little bit, because if you have like neuropathic pain, like say if you have like, like sciatica, like pain that runs down, you know, your leg or, or some people have it down both their legs, yeah. um, you know, numbness and tingling, then that is actually responds better to THC. So that's why, you know, some people say that they need the THC because in general, um, you know, there's a little bit of literature on this, but this is for sure what I found with my patients is that neuropathic pain responds better to THC, whereas um, the like more of like an inflammatory type of pain will respond better to, to CBD. But on that note, too, one of the ways that um, THC decreases pain uh, is that it actually blocks the signal um, that goes to your brain that tells you that you're in pain. And like I have a lot of patients who will say to me, you know, I can feel the pain, but it doesn't really bother me anymore. Mm. And you know, I think that they're kind of getting that that effect. Like the pain is still there. It's just that their mind is more or less like dissociated from from feeling it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It's helped both you guys for pain, right? Brody and Darren? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not like the pain goes away. You just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's that's like so, so, so typical of what someone says, you know? Um, so I appreciate Brody saying that. <laughs> so do you... Geez, I got loud all of a sudden. So do you think... Um, do you think we're sort of... Um, do you think seizures, seizures and cancer and, and sort of where we're at now with cannabis, is this sort of the, the, the infancy or are we halfway through or where do you think we're oh, at sort of an extracting? Infancy. Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, they say that there's over 140 cannabinoids in cannabis, right? And like so far on this show, and I mean, I can't really talk about too too many anymore can talk about maybe a couple more um we've only talked about thc and cbd so we've only talked about two of them so we have all these other cannabinoids to discover and and like they all may have you know incredible um medicinal properties so i think that we're definitely only you know in the infancy stages you know and terpenes also have you know um some really uh medicinal effects as well um, like a lot of my veteran patients and patients with PTSD, you know, they're really high on the mercine because mercine is a terpene that's, you know, been shown to be really sedating. So, um, you know, that's, that's something that, um, like people can kind of like, um, tailor to their treatment a little bit more once they know more about the cannabis and once we know more about the cannabis. So, you know, I'm looking forward to people being able to, pick out more than just two cannabinoids you know maybe they'll be able to pick out you know three or four cannabinoids and um that that they really like and that they'll be able to want to isolate into a plant so they can use you know do you think uh do you think we can do that without big pharma getting big involved? pharma yeah. getting involved and without um like getting guess, high kind like, of getting hijacked and taken for? away from us really like. yeah like uh yeah processed you know do we have to can we do like if we start to process it do we start to lose that well um i don't think so i think you can definitely have you know the best of both worlds you know because i mean and i even put out this on um on my social media like the longest study examining um smoking cannabis on lung health it's a 20-year study and you know it's in JAMA like one of the most prestigious you know journals stated that you know cannabis use was not associated with decreased lung health right like what like one joint a day and you know I certainly don't advocate smoking but what I'm saying is that you know if you do have a joint a day or less it is unlikely to affect your lung health 
and there's no one that's ever going to be that's ever going to you know take your um ability to way to you know grow your own medicine if you want to do that you know especially now that you that we have you know legalization here um in canada so i think that you know there's there's definitely some things that are going to be given you know back to the the people you could say um you know will pharma big pharma have to come in and um and take over to isolate all these things um you know i don't necessarily think so i think that they definitely want to hop on it and they definitely want to um you know get as many pharmaceuticals as they can out of this but um you know where it's such like a complicated plant and where it is right now you know i don't know if the level really have like a complete monopoly on it um you know it just doesn't really seem to be going that way right now um like right now in canada still i mean it's I guess it's only been about four years, but you know, if you get a prescription or an authorization for cannabis, you know, you're getting it from a licensed producer. Like no one's ordering it from Pfizer or you know one of these other big companies yet. And you know, I can't really see that happening um, or changing too soon in the future. So I think that uh, you know, pharma is definitely going to get involved, and they want to get involved, but. You know, I think that we're, we're overall we're in a pretty good position. The people are in a pretty good position. Perfect. Do you think? Uh, do you think rec? Do you think the rec has a, helps or hurts? Helps or hurts the medical system? Yeah, the medical cause, I guess, or the medical. Does it does it make your job easier or harder? Um, I wouldn't really say it's it's made it harder or or easier. Um, I would say that people are maybe a little bit more open minded about it now. Can you explain you know? that a little bit, Darren? What did you mean? Well, like, the I guess, you mean, or what? What do you mean? Well, the legalization does the legalization of it as being a recreational oh. substance does that what does that do to its medical credit right, yeah, credibility yeah. and what is it i'm, okay. I'm interested in what it might have done to business uh, did it make business go up because some people who are on the fence uh decided to take the plunge or did business go down because people can now get it without that piece of paper well we didn't know what was going to happen well like what was going to happen at our clinic but our, our calls just went like doubled or tripled like after wow. you guys happened wow. um and, and like i really just think that it's because uh the legalization kind of not necessarily adds credibility to it but people are now just less afraid to use it whereas before um you know i think that they were sort of like afraid to even go into like a cannabis clinic especially in the early days like it's kind of like people going into almost like a dispensary now um whereas now you know things have um have kind of like opened up and you know people may still have that feeling when they go into a dispensary but i think that you know less people have that feeling now that um they can go to a medical clinic and also too you know even though it's only been you know four years we've had this change in canada about four and a half now really from you know um the mmpr system which, which really made it kind of easy easier for a physician to to prescribe cannabis um you know even in that period like there's been so many changes and you know i don't want to um go on about it again but like i said earlier like i could just prescribe dried cannabis initially so you know people who are coming to my to my clinic they knew that's all they could get right but so and you know that's gonna you know potentially attract a different crowd of patients than say patients who know that they can get capsules or they can get oils or um and also and also too you know just a little bit more education you know there's more education out there that's, that's being provided right now so you know i think that um that's kind of uh, part of the reason why it's it's maybe made the medical system even a little bit stronger nice so what was your what about your personal interest in this like how, did you know you wanted to go down this route when you were doing your studies and learning how to be a doctor as well and going through all your nutrition courses and everything i mean did you was this part of your plan or did something shift for you no i definitely 
wasn't part of my plan at all. I never ever thought during medical school or residency that I'd be prescribing cannabis. Um, like like I said, um, and like we kind of you know, talked about briefly, like you know I was um, always pretty involved in sports and um, you know especially during like medical school and residency was really into and still am into you know, weightlifting. Um, and you know so I thought okay maybe I'll do sports medicine so that's what my whole direction was during uh, during medical school and during residency it was like I thought I was gonna do something in sports medicine or something in like nutrition maybe something like that so I didn't think I was gonna do do cannabis at all really but um, you know I'm really glad that things have turned out all the way that they have because you know it's been great yeah now, did you did you see an opportunity there, or did you did something shift your personally for you? Um, well, like I said earlier, like I I was seeing patients who were in pain, or you know they couldn't sleep, oh, okay. uh, yeah. or they had some anxiety, and I was just like I knew like myself that like like, like you know I just wanted to say to them like man like if just you use like, yeah. yeah like you probably be able to sleep yeah. right but like. <laughs> Obviously, like I couldn't say that, and yeah. I w- I didn't have like my clinic set up at that time, yeah. um, so I you know I need to I needed to figure out a way where I could you know do this properly and and help these people um, because you know it feels like terrible when you like know that you can help someone, but you know you're gonna give them you know something that you don't wanna like a pharmaceutical or something that you don't think is, is as effective, you know, as, as cannabis. Like no one wants to have that feeling. I don't want to have that feeling. Um, so, you know, I just made a, a cannabis clinic so I didn't have to basically. Um, and then that way, you know, when people came in, you know, I had that one more tool in my toolbox um, or that I could use whenever they had, you know, the pain, the insomnia or whatever it was. Do you have any other questions, Darren, from the chat or anything like that or? Uh, I haven't caught any that went by. Um, go ahead. Um, is there any concerns about medical growing when it comes to like pesticides or fluoride water or any of that? Kind of oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know if you could hear that. I don't know, but Brody asked if there's any concerns when it comes to medical growing with pesticides or the fluoride in the water or anything like that. Well, I think all. You know, cannabis should be clean. Um, you know, like, uh, and I know some people, um, you know, have their opinions about this, but I only eat organic food, like, for the most part. You know, if I go out to a restaurant or whatever, you know, I don't really care. Like, that's that's fine. It's different. Um, but, you know, in my home, I only eat organic food. So, you know, I would only want to have organic cannabis products as well. Um, you know, I think, you know, I... I'm not there, the one examining the plants, but I think, you know, the people in, in Health Canada do do a good job of uh, making sure that the licensed producers, you know, for the most part, produce good product. Um, I know that a lot of patients, you know, do complain from time to time about the quality of the supply and also the, the, the lack of the lack of supply. And, you know, I can certainly, you know, agree with them on the lack of supply. Um, you know, in many aspects because, you know, it, it, it is medicine. It's like running out of penicillin or running out of azithromycin. Like it's, it's crazy to be, to be running out um, of, of, uh, of cannabis. Um, but in, uh, you know, to kind of like answer your question, I mean, I think it's really important uh, to make sure that you do get good quality organic products. And I would, you know, recommend to everyone, you know, listening to make sure that you do try to source um, the best uh, and highest quality products possible. Do you think, um, what do you think, because I mean, half the dispensaries in here for rec are just completely out. Um, yeah. Do you think, what do you, is that because they're throwing a bunch out or they just haven't, haven't sorted it out or they don't have enough suppliers or what do you think's what, what going do you mean on throwing there? A bunch out? What does that mean? Wow, how much? I wonder what their discard rate is. 
Because it's not like penicillin. You're not going to get 100%. I mean, it's a plant. you got to grow that motherfucker. You think there's a, disc, a pretty high discard rate from all this? I don't know. It depends how stringent they are. That's what I'm asking the doc. Oh, okay. Um, or can stuff that doesn't get rated for medical, can they, like, throw that to the rec pile? Or I have no idea. I, I'm, I'm not sure what, like, the DLPs do, like, at, at the end of the day, like, when they if they discard a lot of product or not, I, I have no idea. Um, sorry, I can't answer that much. Interesting. What, what about but, just the whole stock issue in general? Well, I know here in town, like people have put some of the, the, the stuff from, from the dispensary, which comes from that Alberta government, some fucking way or another. And they said, you know, you put that stuff under a microscope and it's just disgusting. Yeah. The dispensaries I've, here still have stock. It's just really bad. Yeah, yeah, and I heard, but you know, bugs and crap, and you know, just like, just yeah. bad I, quality, I mean, which I assume is because it's getting cut down early, or it's overcrowded, or you know, they're they're doing something wrong. I mean, yeah, like that's that's cannabis you don't want to consume. You know, like you wouldn't eat, you know, a rotten apple, or, or you know, so you shouldn't go eat or you shouldn't go, you know, use cannabis. That's. Um, you know that's that that really should be discarded. You know, so I think that you should treat your cannabis the same way that you treat your food, and you should go for the highest quality source. Yeah, which is maybe just growing your own. How do you are you able to? Uh, so I guess you, so you're not involved in that. You just basically probably give a prescription, and then you know you give. How does how does how does the process work when a patient comes to you? Sure. So. I have a intake form, so before I see the patient, I know you know quite a bit about them because I know have to know their whole medical history and then also the, their whole cannabis history. You know if they have been using cannabis and how they've responded to it over the years and, and that type of thing. Um, so I have that before I see see the patient, and then um, I'll see them in my clinic. Um, and I see a lot of you know people have their appointments online. Um, you know, I see maybe one person online on like BC a day if it's someone who, you know, just really, um, you know, lives like four or five hours away and can't get into the clinic or if they're, you know, crippled and, and you know, can't get in for, for whatever reason. So I always see my patients in the clinic, but I know a lot of people do it on video. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, I've, uh, I, I've teamed up um with a partner called GrowWise and they actually help educate my patients as well so after i see the patient and and you know assess them and explain them you know how to use cannabis they're also seen by uh, one of my educators and then after that um they can even call um the educator nine to five monday to friday and get feedback on the questions as well so um you know we have a really good i think we provide a really good service in that way um, and you know, most of our patients are feel like they're pretty educated when they leave. So then, is that is that the same sort of deal in Alberta? Where from that, those sort of educators help them pick a pick a provider at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I, but with my clinic, like you can go with any provider. Like I'm not tied to anyone, and we always tell even patients to go with you know at least two providers, um, just because. Um, you know, these providers run out of stock, you know, so, you know, the chances of two running out versus one are, are a lot slimmer. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the way that we try and get around that issue in our clinic. Have you had any, what are your sort of, can you give us some of your sort of high level su success stories with patients? Yeah. Um, sure. I mean, you know, it goes from, you know, like there's, there's patients who, um, you know, just have what some may call, you know, um, not so, you know, life threatening issues. Like I described earlier, you know, someone who you know, is in the early twenties, they want to be driving, you want to feel independent. Um, you know, you get them the license back, like that can really, you know, change, change someone's life. So, you know, you can change someone's life that way, but there's also people, um, you know, particularly veterans in, in the military, um, you know, like once, once they get a hold of cannabis, you know, they, it, it completely changes their life because, you know, if I can just explain like, like PTSD for, for a second, you know, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, 
uh, you know, that's what a lot of these veterans um, suffer from. You know, in the daytime, like a lot of these these guys and these girls, like they don't leave their home. Like when I ask them, like how many days a month you leave their home, like it, a lot of times it's like ten days or less. Like they really don't get out much. Um, and then at night, you know, they they get nightmares, like two or four hours of sleep a night, like nightmares, night sweats, um, that type of thing. But once they they get a hold of cannabis, you know, it's it's a it's just a great plant for, for veterans because the CBD um, has a very, very unique um, mechanism in that it can, it's been shown to decrease learned fear. And like no one's born with PTSD, you know, even like, like basically all mental health disorders, like it's all acquired. Like it, it, no one's born depressed or born, born anxious, like born with, with all these traumas. But um, when you use CBD, it can decrease that learned fear. So it can kind of, you can unlearn some of the fear that you've learned. And that's why it can be so effective for someone who's learned fear, say if they're like a veteran overseas. Um, and then for, uh, for nighttime use, it's, you know, if you use THC, it can really, uh, decrease nightmares. And then without the nightmares, they can get the sleep that they need. And then once they get to sleep, like that just, that's just a complete game changer. It changes everything, changes the mood, changes the way they feel. You know, they have less anxiety, more energy, you know, more sleep will in increase your testosterone as well. Like it's, it's so important. So, um, you know, it's, it's just a magical plant for veterans. So, you know, I think that most of my success stories would really um, come from just treating, treating that group. Do you have any thoughts on, on <clears throat> THC and addiction? Like, I, uh, you know, there's the, most of these, uh, recovery modalities like the 12 steps and m most of the other ones are abstinent based. And, and although I, I agree with that model and I, I, I feel like that's important and I practice that, I feel like there's a gap here between people that can use cannabis as, uh, in harm reduction from, you know, opiates or, or harder drugs or even alcohol and there's nowhere really for these people to go. Like as far as, you know, I mean, they can go to these, these other sort of, um, you know, mod modalities, but it's, but it's, it's hard for them because they're not practicing like abstinence as it's, as it's, uh, as it's kind of taught. Yeah. And, um, and that's exactly, you know, what I had, uh, mentioned on my Twitter, uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, it's that, like we've, we've over glorified, um, you know, being sober and sometimes, you know, trying to make someone completely sober, um, is not the right thing to do. You know, like some people need some THC mm -hmm. and part of the reason, uh, THC is effective as a medicine is because it does have some dissociative effects. You know, that high feeling can be medical, you know, it helps people, um, fall asleep and it helps people dissociate from their pain yeah. and when you're in really severe pain and you know nothing else is working they need that dissociative effect you know that's good medicine um, to do that so I completely agree with you and I think that you know people coming off you know opiates as you said you know and other you know prescription drugs or you know or, or street drugs you know they may need um, cannabis and you know, not just CBD, but also THC to you know get them through some withdrawals and get them through some difficult periods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's you know, it's it's a tough one because it's a fine line because it still can lead some people back to addiction or they can just become you know addicted to that as well. I mean, it, it is a it is a, a legitimate risk. So it's uh, so I kind of I kind of agree with you. I think it could be used in a beneficial way, and I think there needs to be some understanding around that in the addiction community and there needs to be a place for people that want to start their healing process with that or even just continue with that i mean it's, it's better than you know fentanyl on the streets <clears throat> yeah absolutely and i think that you know what we really have to look at is function right you don't like let's look at function more than like sobriety yeah. like is this person functioning yeah, right yeah. they go to work every day are they taking care of their kids are they taking care of their wife are they you know doing what they're supposed to be doing yeah. you know um if you have to use if you use a little bit of chic 
and you get everything done, you know, I don't think that we should, um, you know, discriminate that person at all. You know, I think that that person has figured out uh, something that has worked for them. And, you know, we should applaud them like, hey, man, like you figured out what works for you. You're doing great. Like, good on you. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think they should uh, they should be discriminated against. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. It's like, well, yeah, I was going to, I mean, that's the other thing because I, you know, uh, aside from cannabis, the other one um, that I think should be <laughs> legalized right away is like psilocybin. I think there's a lot of, you know, I, I use psilocybin and I, I think it's, you know, uh, fairly spiritual in a lot of sense and healing in a, in a big way too. I mean, like you were, you were talking about PTSD before, I think they're having a lot of success with PTSD and psilocybin and depression and, and things like that. And I mean, what the fuck is sobriety anyway? Am I sober after I have a venti, a triple venti from Starbucks or what about after I crush a bunch of, uh, you know, a super high carb lunch and then three hours later I'm, I'm, you know, barely coherent because I'm falling asleep because, you know, I'm having the carb crash, you know, like where does, where do you, where does, I don't know. I just think, you know, are you sober in those moments? I, I agree. You know, you're, like, you're making like a really good point. Um, like I had, um, you know, an incident that were probably uh, like a couple months ago where I was um, you know, supposed to drive from. Um, you know, I had a driver take me from London to Toronto to do uh, a speech. And, um, you know, right away w when I left, I realized that I forgot my headphones. And like on the way there, I just stopped into a non route and just got like a crappy pair of headphones just because I had to put them in because I had to, um, you know, listen to some material that I was wanting to listen to before. I got there and I wanted, you know, some things to be kind of like fresh yeah. um, in, in my mind, you know? So, you know, like, is that an addiction, you know? And, and I ha kind of had that thought when, uh, when I was doing it, um, at that time. So, you know, you can definitely, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, like a drug, you know, either a street drug or a prescription drug, but you can, you can have, you know, different addictions that basically trigger, the same habits, same thoughts, you know, same like chemical changes in, in, in your brain that make you feel the exact same. So, um, you know, I think that in, in many ways, you know, you just have to be self-aware and kind of govern your, your, uh, your behavioral patterns and just kind of, you know, figure out what works and what doesn't work and make sure that you don't get too attached to anything. Yeah. <clears throat> what, we had a, we yeah, had a I, comment in the chats from Cody that says he considers cannabis as part of his sobriety because it helps him with his mental health. There you go. Yeah. And, I, and I, and I, you know, I haven't like coined this term before um, because, you know, I don't really want to make it, um, you know, particular to cannabis because, you know, as you alluded to, um, you know, earlier, Darren, like there are other, you know, medicines that are being studied now, like, like by maps, you know, like MDMA and, and, and psilocybin in, in, in particular, that may also be really beneficial for, uh, for PTSD and for trauma. Um, but, you know, like I, you know, I've kind of thought of like coining the term, like, you know, like, like cannabis abstinence, you know, your absence from anything, but cannabis, you know, and that could be, you know, a win, but in that regard too, like, I don't want to shun out, um, any other potential medicines that may also be beneficial that we, that we just discussed. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But the drug war is a different thing. I mean, I, I don't think we should be advocating for legalization because something spiritual, it should just be, you know, we should look at legalizing well, it should just everything. Be legal because I mean, it everything should just be legal because it's, just a it's supposed control. to be a free fucking country. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, so, I mean, you don't want to be like this, you know, saying, Oh, mushrooms, should be, but this isn't, I mean, or shouldn't be, I mean, it should just all be, I mean, look at Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. I mean, that's a prime example. They got, you know, everything is better. Everything, you know, the bad things are down and the good things are up. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what else you, what else you need. I mean, yeah, you, you couple that with the, the European countries that, that, you know, allow youth drinking or and, in the it, public, even you can go to a park and drink in the public. Yeah. And they have a way less instances of binge drinking now when these kids turn into their twenties and it's just, yeah, it's just the, the prohibition never works. No, I agree with the, you know, 
So, um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder if we'll ever get there. I mean, I'm a, for me, it's like, cause you don't want the fucking bath salts and stuff getting in there, but I mean, we could, we should be able to start off at least with, if it fucking grows in the ground, then you shouldn't be able to legislate it. Maybe you can regulate it, but you shouldn't be able to prohibit it. Like, well, I mean, maybe shit should be illegal because you can blow up Oklahoma City buildings with it. No more shitting. Here we go. Are there interactions with cannabis and pharmaceuticals? So uh, cannabis and pharmaceuticals, like there, there are interactions that, that, do, um, that do exist. So I'll just try and maybe highlight like the big ones. Um, you know, the biggest one really would be anything that's really sedating, because if you use, you know, THC, it's going to sedate you. So, you know, if you're taking a sleeping pill, uh, or if you're taking, you know, a benzodiazepine, uh, if you're taking, you know, opioids, um, or anything that's really like sedating, um, and then you mix it with, with, uh, with cannabis, then it could definitely, you know, over sedate you. Um, and also too, there is uh, a synergy between opioids and, and cannabis, meaning that if you use uh, cannabis and opioids together, you know, they can make each other more effective at the synergistic effect. Um, so because of that, uh, you know, you really want to be careful if, if you're mixing, um, you know, the ones that I just mentioned. What about, uh, do you have any, um, do, do you, do you use cannabis yourself? I use CBD oil. You treat that just for, do you have a shoulder injury or something like that? Or just as a test? <laughs> Funny that you said I had a shoulder injury because I've never had an injury almost before in my life. And right now, actually, I'm like 99% sure that I have. A tear in my shoulder. I'm just kind of too afraid to go get an ultrasound right now. Uh -huh. but, um, yeah, um, you know, I, I use it uh, for that. You know, I also find that, you know, it really helps my joints. Like I do something every single day. So I usually have to go to the gym or, or do MMA every single day. Um, so you know, have something overall um, that can just kind of take care of your joints, give you a little bit of an anti inflammatory effect. Um, you know, it's great. And then also too, you know, definitely can give you a little bit of a boost in your overall well being, um, which kind of gives you, you know, a little bit more energy, maybe makes you work better, make better decisions. Uh, so, you know, for me, it's, um, it's something that, you know, I, I don't see myself really ever, you know, discontinuing. And that's just strictly CBD non -so psychoactive. So it's like, if I was practicing abstinence from cannabis, I could use that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, abstinence from cannabis, I mean, you know, technically CBD is part of, um, well, you know what I mean? I mean, the THC, like yeah. a mind affecting kind of, yeah. yeah, it's non psychoactive. So you would be pre product would be, you know, practicing sobriety yeah. as you could yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. Cause I mean, that might, that might help for some of my joint pain and shit like that. Like I, do, I just don't want to be high either. I don't want to, I don't want to partake in that. The fucking so, diet. besides the coffee or the fucking carbs, I don't want to do the. Sex. You know, I've got my lines yeah. drawn around yeah. drugs and alcohol. Yeah. You know, yeah, weird little so boxes I, drawn I, all I over the place. I didn't do any like research. Before. That's okay. That's okay. I, I started uh, the show. So, um, Graham, do you not use cannabis? No, no. Okay. It's been ten and a half years from drugs and alcohol, including THC. Okay. Yeah. How long okay. has it been from THC? Same amount of time? Yeah, probably two days. More two days. <laughs> Atta boy. <laughs> Thorough. Three days more. <laughs> Ten and a half years in three days. So. I, I, I do use cannabis quite regularly. It's, yeah, it's quite, a, it's a little bit of a, yeah. That, that, was, that was pretty evident yeah. about two minutes in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You tell? Sometimes How you can you hear tell? the bong sound going oh, off. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you a little bit before we run out of time here about other, you know, advice you have for people. Yeah. I mean, you've been blogging and, and researching, you know, health and wellness on a 
bunch of different levels. You know, yeah. I've, it's been great to see you writing articles about everything from uh, sunscreen being, you know, possibly more hazardous than we think to high fat diets to, uh, you know, um, some of the tips for healthy living like exercise and organic food. So, I mean, what do you think? Uh, you know, I mean, it's obvious exercise and, and healthy eating is, is beneficial, but is there something that you, uh, you suggest that's out of the box a little bit or that people need to hear? Not something that's out of the box, but something they need to hear. You got to have a routine. Hmm. You got to have a routine. That's a tough your one. Your routine is going to save you, you know, because some days, like, your motivation is going to die, right? Because, like, I get up 5.30 every morning, you know, and, and I always you know, make coffee. I, I make this crazy shake. You know, I make eggs and, and I get to work, you know, and I do that every single day, no matter what I feel like. Right. Because there's going to be days where I'm not, you know, feeling that well. But, like, I do that now, like, I'm brushing my teeth, right? Like, when you have a bad day or when you, you know, <clears throat> when you're late for work or whatever, you could probably still manage to brush your teeth. It's just part of your routine. It's just part of what you do, you know, for, for you know, most people. Um, so, you know, you just have to build in, like, what you want to become and the habits that you want into your routines. So, like, what are your goals? Uh, what are the habits that you want to have? Like, who you pitch yourself becoming? Like, what do you want to become? Like, think about all these things and then just think, like, if I want to become this person, you know, if I'm going to create this, this kind of person, you know, what am I, what do I have to do? What do I have to change my daily routines? And then you do that every single day. And then just slowly over time, you know, very, very slowly, you just kind of build all these habits, build all these routines. And then everything just becomes like automated. And then one day, you know, without even kind of noticing, you're kind of, you'll, you, you would have become the person that you, you know, wanted to become. So I think that <clears throat> building that morning routine is um is so important you know you kill that first hour and you can really kill the rest of your day yeah that's really good advice it's tough man i i've been reading so much about you know this whole thing about daily meditation keeps coming back up and like you hear i'm hearing it from all different angles and you know it's hard to do i try it but i mean i, I know it's just an excuse i've got a list of things i want to do daily like this routine but it's mm -hmm. tough it's tough when you get up at for work at five five thirty or whatever like that's the other thing, though, too, is like there's so many people who will tell you, like, hey, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to read this book, you got to listen to this podcast, like all this type of stuff. Like, you you got to kind of like figure out, like, like, like what are your priorities yeah, and which yeah. ones are most important, yeah. right? And like, you know, like for me, like I do ten minutes of meditation. Like to me, like that's like a reasonable amount of time. Like yep. an hour is just unreasonable. Like that's just <laughs> cutting into my day then. Like I can't do that. Right. Like I don't care what the benefits are. Cause I know that to me, you know, that's, that, that's, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so you got to figure out what it is. So, you know, for me, like, you know, the, the 10 minutes of meditation, you know, it takes me five minutes or less to do, you know, the five minute journal. It's literally what it's called. Um, and then, the uh the last thing i do is i read from the daily stoic you know those three things you know so it's like 20 minutes you know where um you know and, and i guess you could you could say 20 minutes is kind of a long time to do stuff but you know i can carve out 20 minutes and it really definitely helps the rest of my day yeah from the daily what the daily stoic by uh, a guy ryan holiday okay so stoicism like an ancient philosophy yeah, yeah. Uh, something i really study a lot nice yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, talk to yeah. the mic. So what uh what about what about uh diets? Is there any before we run out of time we get off the cannabis for a couple minutes? What about uh you know there's the keto, the paleo, you know, gluten, all these things flying around. Um yeah. I mean I I pretty well I'm off gluten now. I quit a bunch of stuff, but the only thing I really stayed off is gluten. I'm still trying to stay off the dairy as well, except for butter and stuff, but yeah, dairy gets tough, but gluten was actually easier than I thought, and I don't know that I'd go back. Um, what is your sort of what's your take on diet? What do you do? What do you recommend? What do you what do you think is good? What do you think is garbage? Okay, um, I mean, 
there's lots of different diets that like work for different people. Like the things that, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, what, what I do um, after, but the things that I think that definitely work, um, you know, just like low carb dieting in general. So, you know, um, you know, the ketogenic diet, and that's something that I do do quite a bit. Um, but you know, even just low carb, like if you can just not eat any starches until after your workout, like you can get really lean doing that, you know? So, um, just don't eat any carbs in the day. You know, most people have the workout at night. Um, and then, you know, right after it, then you can kind of, you know, binge on, on some carbs, you know, even then kind of try and keep it pretty clean, like sweet potatoes, butternut squash, um, you know, that type of thing, you know, don't, don't, you know, be trying to like eat like a lot of sugar. And then of course with that, you're going to want to have some vegetables and, and some high quality protein, um, in there too. So, you know, I'm a really big fan of eating low carb in general. I am though a definite fan of, of the ketogenic diet. Like one thing about, you know, low carb versus like keto, like you'll get like not all, but a lot of the weight loss benefits with low carb, um, you know, with keto, like once you go, the thing with, 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 with uh, ketosis, I think where a lot of people stay is actually more of like the cognitive benefits because once you feel like you're in ketosis, it's a pretty addictive feeling, you know, like, like, like you feel really good. Um, you know, like I remember, you know, one time, you know, I, I was like supposed to go out with my friends on, on a Friday and, um, you know, I probably would have had like a drink or two that night. And like, I was I, I remember I, I was in this really deep state of ketosis and I was like, I just don't want to do anything to my physiology to change the way that I feel right now. Like I don't want to do anything that to, to change the way I feel. Um, so, you know, that's how good you can feel when you're, when you're in ketosis. So I think that that's why, um, like a lot of people end up staying on, on the diet is because they just kind of get addicted to that, like mental clarity that you get when you're in that like deep state of, of, uh, of, uh, ketosis. Jeez. Um, just some couple other quick things too. Like, you know, a lot of people do like the intermittent fasting. Um, like I don't do that because I do the ketosis. Like if you can do ketosis and intermittent fasting, like that's, that's really hardcore to me. Um, you know, intermittent fasting though is something that I've written about before and I definitely still do believe in it a lot. You know, I'm just not doing it right now because I'm just kind of, you know, leaning more towards the, um, the uh, ketosis side and to do both of them, I just find it to be a little bit too, too difficult. Um, but that's when you get like, you know, the autophagy and the recycling of the cell organelles and you know, there's, a lot, there's a lot of benefits to, to intermittent fasting. Um, but I'll just kind of get back to what I kind of do right now. So, um, you know, right now, uh, like I said, I'll wake up in the morning and then I'll, um, I still do, um, uh, basically a, not, I'm not, it's not bulletproof coffee. What I do is I take one scoop of MCT oil powder. So I find the powder to be much more, um, it's easier, much better easier on my, the stomach too, maybe, or yeah, easier on the stomach and way creamier of a coffee than, than the oil. So I do six shots in the morning. You know, I, I have two of them right away. And then the other four, I just put in my thermos and then I, um, and then I basically just drink that all day. So it's about three cups of coffee, which is, you know, kind of reasonable. Um, and then, uh, so right after that is when, um, I have kind of like my super shake. So I'll put in like a bunch of green vegetables in there. Uh, I'll put in some collagen peptides in there. Um, I use this, uh, reds and greens product from ATP labs, um, and then I use, uh, like some apple cedar vinegar, um, spirulina, um, ashwagandha, um, cool. ginger. So there's, I, you know, I'm, there's, there's different things that, that I put in and I'll, and I'll put in, you know, two or three green vegetables in there too, maybe three or four green vegetables, um, some sauerkraut too. I put in a lot, a lot of that. Um, you know, that's really good for, for, your, for your gut health. So that all goes in the shake. Uh, spin that up and drink it and then and then i'll make eggs with avocado so i have usually about four to five eggs usually four right now because i'm usually in a full full avocado so a full avocado four eggs and then i pack that and i take that for my lunch and that's more or less what i eat from um from like you know from when i wake up almost until 
I go work out. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll have like a protein bar. Um, like I'm using one of these, um, Susie's fats they're called. So I think there's like 13 grams of fat and like nine, um, grams of protein and like two, maybe three carb or less, um, in these bars. So, you know, they're pretty solid, uh, for, 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 you know, just having like a quick snack in the day. Um, so that's generally what I'll do. And then before I go to the gym, like I'll have usually a pre-workout, um, go to the gym, you know, do my workout, come home. Um, and then what I do for a post-workout shake um, is I usually use one scoop of, of whey protein and then I'll, I'll use strawberries. So the reason I use strawberries is because they're fairly low, low carb. Um, but, you know, I do have a little bit of an insulin um, sensitivity spike going on then because that's what happens when you when, when you work out. You get those glute four transporters come to the front of the cell. So, um, you know, I usually have uh, a little bit of whey and then and then some uh, some strawberries. And then after that is kind of when I have like my big meal. So my big meal is usually um, butternut squash is like my go to has been for like I don't know, almost a couple of years now. And then I mix that usually with vegetables. So spinach, kale, broccoli. Um, you know, there's a mix I have with like uh, white navy bean, I think it's called, um, collard greens, uh, red pepper, some green pepper in there. So um, there's like a mix that I, that I usually mix it with. And then I, I use a lot of, of uh, grass-fed butter on my vegetables. So a ton of, ton of butter. And then what I've been doing lately is like, I, um, I'll have like, like six or seven containers of just like grass fed beef or turkey or chicken or whatever it is that I'll cook up like at the beginning of the week and then put them into containers. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, and then when I go home, like I do what I, what I was just saying in my rice cooker, like the, the butternut squash and the vegetables and all that. So then I'll just take my, um, my container full of, full of meat heat it up for a minute and I'll just take that and put it in the rice cooker and mix it all up. So it's, it tastes amazing and it's just really, really convenient because all I have to do is just like throw a few like frozen veggies uh, and butternut squash and some butter in the, in the rice cooker, press it on and then just, you know, go to my freezer, pop open my, um, my, my meat, you know, 60 seconds, um, in the microwave and then I'll throw it in the, um, in, in, with, in with the rice cooker and I'm good to go. So it's, I don't know, it's one of the more convenient ways i found to kind of eat. Yeah, that's well done. Yeah, I've, I've been through the, uh, the low carb phases. I haven't really made it into keto and I noticed a difference in the last couple of weeks with my shitty diet. You've got I do feel diet. foggy. No, I feel foggy. Like I can really, I'm starting to, I never got to the point in, well, I did actually, I felt clearer even on a low carb diet, I think. So it's just good, and and I like the way he's figured uh, how you figured everything out, like the little hacks in the kitchen and doing all that. It's it's uh, I try and stick with sometimes for dinner like uh, just a meat and veggie type thing, like a meat and a salad for the most part. But it's uh, it's during the day that I struggle. Morning, the gut truck. Yeah, the food truck gets yeah, you. Yeah, that's it. Why don't you just skip breakfast and then that could be part of your fast? I try, but I you, I, I need to get you need to get there and then you won't be be hungry. But anyways, there's other issues oh yeah. Do you yeah coffee in the morning i do yeah 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 but i put uh, honey i put honey in it i kind of ruined the whole keto thing oh, right off the bat with the honey yeah. so yeah you do <laughs> yeah i have honey i have honey before bed and i've heard guys talk about like skipping the coffee till like 10 or 11 and drinking like six glasses of water and flushing out all those toxins from from the sleep you know and that's probably the what i should be doing but yeah. Um, I would say try, try, try and do uh, just, just coffee in, in the morning, like just uh, black. Uh, dude, uh, Does it have to be black? I have butter and thick milk in there. What about blueberries? I usually have some blueberries in the morning. See, those will give you a little bit of a spike too in your blood sugar, right? I mean, not like crazy, nothing like crazy, but you know, if you, if you go through, through the fast or if you just have like, like fats and that's why like there's also this like bulletproof fast that like kind of works as well yeah. um but if you just have um the fats then you um you won't get that that like instant spike and you won't get hungry yeah. you may not feel hungry to like you know one or two p.m so i'll just have like a spoonful of butter 
and some black <laughs> coffee. <laughs> can I put stevia yeah. in the coffee? No honey. You can put stevia in there, but no. Okay, no honey though. No honey. What I do though is I would recommend putting the MC2 oil powder and then save my butter for the veggies at night. That's a good That's idea. Good Interesting. Idea. Does that cost like uh, ten dollars a day? Like the what was that? The bulletproof coffee and the butter gets expensive. We, we tried it out for a while, but then yeah, the first bag was gone in like three days. We we're like, holy fuck. <laughs> All the support money is going to bulletproof coffee. Graham's using it for enemas. <laughs> True story. Couple times. Couple times. Uh, um, that was energizing. The coffee. It is unfortunate, though, that he won't smoke that. a joint, but he'll put coffee in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, no comment. You make good friends. <laughs> uh, huh, so I can have the black coffee's tough. What about honey before bed? Because I usually have uh, the wife and I before bed, we'll have a little herbal tea with uh, some honey in it. Well, you know, again, I would, you know, like not recommend that, but. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Tim Ferriss. Yep. Um, but he's like, he like swears by honey before, before bed. And I think Dave Asprey, the bulletproof, uh, coffee guy does as well. Um, honey, honey before bed. Um, so you know what, um, maybe research what those guys are saying. Cause they're both two, two pretty smart dudes. But for me, I, I just don't do any sugar before bed. That's just a no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was advised to do it because it helped with her when she woke up in the morning, not being as drained and, and things like that. <laughs> yeah. I think he said something like, you know, it's, it'll be a slow release of, I can't remember exactly of sugar throughout the night. So maybe you won't wake up with low energy or something, but I, I don't know if I just didn't, you know, read the article or buy it at the time or what it was, but I just don't like the concept of doing any sugar before bed. So I think I just wasn't really interested in it. What about maple syrup? Same thing. Uh, same, same rules as honey. Yeah. Or is, it, is, is syrup worse than honey or are they the same level or, you know, is the bees better than the trees? So that's my other I, thing on the weekends, the syrup. Oh, I, I bet, say, I bet you have a flask of syrup in your desk. <laughs> so it's like fucking buddy the elf. We should get you a little Christmas get up. <laughs> I'd say the uh, the maple syrup would be worse than the honey. Interesting. That's kind yeah. of what I thought I just, too. I, I think it's higher in, in sugar overall. Yeah. Yeah. Like per. What about what's still better than Aunt Jemima? I mean, the real Canadian syrup is better than the Aunt Jemima fake stuff. I mean, you know, if you're going well, yeah, to have high the fructose sugar, right, corn syrup, you're better off going with the honey and the maple syrup over refined sugar for sure. Right. I mean, we're, we're really talking about com comparing like <laughs> complete crap to complete crap. Really? Is there that bit that much? Like honey's bad. Uh, okay. We're talking about honey. Honey is definitely not. Okay. The same okay. Place. Okay. I was like, okay. I was like, whoa, that's like blowing my mind. Cause I go through some honey. No, 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 no. Honey, honey's not on the same level. Okay. And she's fine. Okay. Cause I have no sugar. We have no sugar in our house at all, but we do, we go through, you know, like $40 worth of honey a month. We get the good stuff though from the farm. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, one of your blogs, I mean, we don't want to keep you too much longer here. We're running, running over. But one of your blogs talked about the importance of knowing where your food comes from and getting to in tune with, with uh, the, the community and the earth and your, the organic farming and stuff around you. Like, I think that's pretty important, too. Yeah, I think that, you know, we are um, like completely like disconnected with with, with our food, you know, most people don't know where their food comes from. They don't really think of, you know, who got the food for them. They're not grateful for it. Um, they, um, you know, they kind of eat it like, um, you know, blindly, like ungratefully. Um, and, uh, and they, and they didn't, you know, in some ways like earn it, you know, um, you could say, you know, you went to the grocery store and you bought it with like money that like you earned, but, and, and definitely, you know, that's a really good feeling. But it's, uh, I think it's a different feeling when, you know, you grow and, and I don't do this myself, but you know, when you grow your own food in your backyard and, you know, you rip it out of the ground and, you know, 
you care for it and you see it grow um, and then you get to eat it yourself. Like I think you are then, you know, more connected to the food. You probably have more you know, questions about the food. Um, and, you know, for a lot of people now too, I think there's, you know, a huge movement going on where a lot of people want to, you know, kill their own meat because we know that, you know, a lot of the conventional meat that people eat the, um, these days is really unhealthy, um, you know, and, um, it's, it's, it's just not good for you. So, you know, a lot of people are, uh, realizing this and, you know, they're kind of taking that into their own hands and, you know, they're making their own gardens or they're, you know, getting a license so that they can, they can go kill their own meat. And I think that, you know, and I need to do this myself, but I think more of us should be doing that because, um, you know, we are definitely, you know, disconnected from our food. And then the more disconnected we are from, from our food, you know, the less like we are, I think, to make good food choices. Um, because, um, you know, we're not going to really ask, um, as many, as many questions as we probably should. And then on top of that, you know, I think that, it just helps with your mental health in many ways because you'll you become more grateful for it. You know, if you have to earn it, um, and and you know if you you know go like shoot something, you know, and then you you take you you know you have to gut it, you know, you have to take it home and all that type of stuff. It's a lot of work, so you know you'll probably appreciate it a lot more when you do when you do you know, you know uh, get to eat it. And you know, I always say to people that you should be you know grateful every single time you eat. Um, and I imagine that the people who um, you know, make, uh, or sorry, grow their own food or, or kill the, the animals that they eat. Um, you know, they probably are a little bit more grateful than the people who don't do that, you know? Yeah. So it is important to be connected to the food. Yeah. I'm just starting to get into that. And gratitude is powerful, day now, man. Any gratitude day my shifts. New... I mean, there's all this new science out about yeah. gratitude and it shifts your, your state of being yeah. physically. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You're going to come out on hunt? Like, angry and and gratitude at the same time yeah exactly like, and feel gratitude like yeah. you just can't you can't do it yeah. you, you can't know? do much else when you're angry no not no. well anyway no never act while you're angry you'll probably do something stupid that's right maybe smoke a joint <laughs> hey if it changes your anger then we can't call that I mean, I think, I think you can call that medicine then. Yeah. You know, so you're going to so, come out on hunt, Graham? I don't know, man. I don't know. We're going to, I'm going to make Graham gut something. I'm struggling with the meat thing right now. Cause I eat a lot of meat and well, we'll uh, go shoot a fucking caribou or something. Yeah. My know. new treaty car is going to be in any fucking day, any day we go in January. Yeah. Anyway, we know you got some stuff to do there. Uh, doc, we appreciate your time. Come back on the show. Anytime you like, uh, Mike, I guess I'll call you Mike. If you're ever in Calgary, for sure, let us know. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Um, you know, thanks so much for having me on. You know, it was really nice meeting you and, uh, you know, I'd love to come back on. So, you know, really, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, hope the listeners like it and, you know, if there's any feedback they can give me, always open to, you know, constructive criticism. So, you know, I, uh, definitely, uh, appreciate that. And, you know, I'd love to come back on and give you guys even a better show next time. Right on. Where where do, where can people get a hold of you? They can your website there, right? Sure. So, uh, mikehartmd.com is my website. Uh, and I'm also at Dr. Mike Hart on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, and on LinkedIn. So it's D R M I K E H A R T. Right on. No podcast. When's the podcast coming? Hopefully, the podcast be coming in 2019. But oh, right. hey. You guys just keep inviting me back on. Maybe we can, I can just do that. Right on. Perfect. Sounds Perfect. good, man. You could be our resident doctor. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You don't <laughs> have to do much to get a doctor license in Grand America. We, <laughs> you don't have to prove anything or you're just in. <laughs> right on. Yeah, good luck with the business and keep that, uh, that healthy cannabis flowing for people. Yeah, you're doing God's work. <laughs> I hope so. I Whoever hope so. that is. Yeah, whatever that is. It <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> okay, Mike. Have a good right, night. Take care, buddy. Come back anytime. Okay, okay thanks so much, guys. Okay, see, ya. see ya. And that was our Ooh. chat with Dr. Mike Cart, who we kept half an hour longer than we said oh, we would. I know. I felt bad, eh? <laughs> that's He's okay. Like, oh. He was having fun. Yeah, I, I could sense that he was still okay to talk. See, yeah. that's why we got the one-two punch. We got the great interviewer and the guy that makes him laugh. <clears throat> Disarms him a little bit. So what do you think? It was good and inspiring. Yeah. I, I can't believe he was a late, he was a, a last minute booking. 
And it was one of those ones that uh, was very awesome. I was pleasantly surprised, and I started looking into him. Uh, you know how, how it worked is great. he got he got fucking caught up in the Twitter algo. Oh, the, the that Adam's doing now, and that's what we. As soon as I seen him pop up on the thing, I was like, "You saw him pop up? Seen? Oh. Seen? Saw? Huh? Agree to disagree." <laughs> Anyway, as soon as I seen him pop up in the feed, I uh, I messaged him, asked if he was interested. I went through his feed a little bit. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, we got to get this guy. And he said yes right away. Yeah, that's fantastic. All this happened inside a week. We had a couple openings before uh, Christmas. We filled them up right away. And it's always great to have another doctor on the show. Yeah, it's inspiring too, these guys that are super healthy. And, uh, you know, you can tell that um, it's affecting their state of being and it's uh they've got these routines and i mean it's just it's like the guy it reminds me of um the primal health guys you know they're just it's fantastic to talk to them and they're super open-minded and they've got these educations and he's very educated and he helps people out and i love it yeah absolutely absolutely uh big thanks to mike crone on the show we'll have to get him back it's nice to have he can be well he's one of those guys that you can kind of because i think the next few years are going to be big for medicine and marijuana so i think he's one of those guys we can kind of tune into from time to time see what's new if yeah. he does start a podcast maybe we can get him on the network yeah right on so awesome big thanks to uh, mike big thanks to you guys for supporting the show check out grimerica um dot ca slash support support the show help us keep doing these things we can do them without um uh, any ads. ads, any commercials, any bullshit, any affiliates. We don't have to go to break. We don't have to do any of that. We go as long as we want. We talk to whoever we want. And we can do that. couldn't do that without you guys who support the show. We really can't. Those guys who do choose to support the show, um, guys and gals, are the people who do prop us up for the rest of you to enjoy. So, uh, yeah, head over to grimerica.ca slash support today. Sign up for a monthly there. There we got the PayPal options, of course. If you head over to grimerica.ca slash stripe, you can sign up for a Stripe monthly there, or you can do one-time donations through Stripe as well. Uh, there's a one-time donation for PayPal on the bottom of the website. Uh, there's the chat. There's a Patreon link. There's the chats, grimerica.ca slash chats. There's the newsletter, which has got a total facelift and revamp, and we've got random gram pictures in there all the time that I take of him while we're podcasting, and he just never sees it coming. And then we see those in the newsletter. So get in the newsletter. Um, Sign up today, grandmarket.ca slash news. What else? Any more housekeeping? We got a housekeeping jingle, but I don't have it ready to go yet. Grandmarket FM, grandmarket.ca slash FM is starting to fill out, shape up, and look like something. If you do have some live shows on there that you think we we should get going, um, or they might have a place on the network, let me know. <laughs> is that you? Somebody just posted. somebody please send that elf picture to darrenacreamerica.com so I can get that in the next newsletter. Oh, the other thing is we are going to start sending out about an hour before we go live. We're going to start sending out a newsletter alert. It won't be anything but a, hey, we're going live in an hour. This is who we're talking to. This is what we're talking about to kind of go out in front of the YouTube alert. So another reason to sign up for the newsletter, grammarica.ca slash news. Sign up today, motherfucker. Sign up for a monthly. Send a one-time donation too. For the last couple of months, you didn't have a monthly. And enjoy the show. And if we don't talk to you, have a lovely Christmas. Actually, this probably won't come out until after Christmas. Really? No, no, I think it'll still be... This might come out oh, like... Might around Christmas, maybe. A radar. Yeah. It's going to be somewhere around Christmas. Yeah. So Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. We love you. Thanks for listening. See you next week. You got something to say? You look like you got something to say over there. No. No? All good. But say, I, oh, we got to talk in the intro tomorrow about your little broken foot. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. See you next week. I'm walking gingerly through the rat race. Take a look at the big old smile on my face. Kicking around down by the pool of narcissists. The people are many, they preen themselves, oh how they navel gaze. 
somewhere over that hill the gloomy skies cease to exist i'm climbing that hill i pass by and pity the poor sisyphus i go into hyperdrive turn into a beam of light i'm strolling down a static electric avenue the people are predictable they say good morning how do you do when out of nowhere a randomly pure angel in the crosswalk bumps into me and in doing so knocks all the evil and all the wind out of me and it's black as tar ugly as ever and of no apology this angelic mama sings heavenly of the truest theology together we're a seraphim dream forever young with no chronology a thousand years from now we'll be written into ancient mythology we go into hyperdrive and turn into a beam of light can you tell me about the view up there? It's sparkling remarkably, the air is crystal clear. Well, please won't you tell me what it takes to transcend this place? A little bit of heart and a whole lot of soul. Take a look at the big old smile on my face. My angel says dance with me and your life will never ever ever be dull. I go into hyperdrive, turn into a beam of light, 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 turn into a beam of light. Turn into a beam of light. Turn into a beam of What? <laughs>